Hello everyone. Welcome to 360 on History, your one-stop resource for blogs, podcasts and videos on science, history and nature. Please check out the website 360onhistory.com, join us on social media and subscribe to 360 on History podcast on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the audio version wherever you get your podcasts. Our planet is currently going through an environmental and climate disaster to the extent that many scientists now believe that Earth is going through a sixth mass extinction event caused by human activity, what we call anthropogenic impacts. A mass extinction event is one where there is a widespread and rapid decrease in biodiversity. So if this is the sixth mass extinction event, when were the previous five? That's what we're going to talk about today. We have to go very far into Earth's history to start, when a lot was happening on the planet with plate tectonics, volcanoes and asteroid strikes. For the first four billion years of life on this planet, unicellular microorganisms something like bacteria or archaea, ruled it. That's it. There were no insects or birds or mammals. The earliest direct fossil evidence of this is from around 3.4 billion years ago in Australia. There is also evidence suggesting that life may have begun 4.2 billion years ago, soon after the formation of our planet and when oceans had started forming, because oceans are where everything lived then as far as we know. These early life forms were not using oxygen to make food, however. There wasn't enough of it then. They were using methane or carbon dioxide and their waste product, oxygen, started filling up in the atmosphere, leading to oxygen using organisms. Then around 600 million years ago, something changed. We don't know exactly what, but there are theories that some of these unicellular organisms combined and became multicellular. From then on, life proliferated. By the way, there are studies that claim that some multicellular forms had already started existing about 1.5 billion years ago. But for the most part, our fossil record tells us that complex life, all the plants, fungi, animals and insects that eventually led to us began 600 billion years ago. Interestingly, this did not happen once, but at least 25 times, initially giving rise to organisms like sponges, jellyfish, and alien-looking things called trilobites. Then, around 530 million years ago, we get what we call the Cambrian explosion, when we get a huge number of complex life forms evolving into many species, including vertebrates. Right. So life starts on earth, it is going about its merry way, plants are colonizing land and insects like, insect-like organisms are venturing out of the oceans onto land. This is when we get the first known mass extinction event. Called the Ordovician Silurian Extinction Event, it occurred 450 to 440 million years ago. This is the second largest of the five mass extinctions killing off 27% of all families, 57% of all genera, and 60 to 70% of all species, most, most of which were in the oceans. In May 2020, a new study theorized that this event occurred due to global warming related to volcanism and low oxygen, but earlier studies suggested that it was due to an intense cold weather period leading to an ice age that froze much of the water from the oceans into glaciers. So, 70% of all species have disappeared and the rest are now trying to make ends meet and to regenerate, which they do for the next 100 million years or so. Some of them, like the fascinatingly named Tiktaalik, which by the way, is an intermediate species between fish and amphibians, have developed four legs and are now moving on to land. And again, boom, around 375 to 360 million years ago, a prolonged series of extinctions take place that eliminate about 19% of all families, 
50% of all genera and at least 70% of all species. Those poor guys who had survived and diversified and proliferated were again almost wiped out. This is the late Devonian extinction event and its causes range from fluctuations in sea level, asteroid strikes and climate change, one or all of which may have led to oxygen depletion in the oceans. The cycle starts again. Life that survived is again trying to move on to a new normal, using the opportunity to evolve into amphibians and reptiles, when along comes the greatest mass extinction in Earth's history around 252 million years ago. The Permian-Triassic event or the PT extinction killed 57% of all families, 83% of all genera and 90-96% to of all species. This included 53% of marine families, 84% of marine genera and about 96% of all marine species and an estimated 70% of land species including insects. Once again, there are a host of culprits blamed for this including asteroid strikes, excessive methane release and sea level change. It seems that the single biggest cause is the huge volcanic complex known as the Siberian Traps. This complex erupted and triggered the release of trillions of tons of carbon resulting in global warming. For a million years, marine and land temperatures rose extensively and almost no fish lived at the equator. The trilobites that we talked about earlier, one of the earliest life forms which had survived the previous extinctions also bit the dust this time and went extinct. Known as the Great Dying, this had a huge impact because it took the vertebrates 30 million years to recover from this. The Great Dying is significant because dominant species like some mammal-like reptiles lost their primacy and others took over from them. In the oceans, many immobile species were depleted and replaced by others like the great marine reptiles. But that's what evolution does. It finds a niche and it utilizes it. Life may be rare in the universe as far as we know, but we have to admit it has been very tenacious on Earth. After the PT extinction, more evolution takes place. Early dinosaurs begin to appear. The ancestors of mammals, however, are small and nocturnal. Then around 200 million years ago, begins the book ending of the age of the dinosaurs. The Triassic-Jurassic extinction event occurs and 23% of all families, 48% of all genera, including 20% of marine families and 55% of marine genera, and 70% to 75% of all species become extinct. Most of the mammals and amphibians are gone and crocodilian-like animals dominated freshwater environments. This event was very good for the dinosaurs because most of their competition died out and they were able to spread all over the planet, some of them becoming the huge ones that we all know and love. The cause of this event is also debated and includes the ever-favorite asteroid strike. One theory says that lava eruptions during the breakup of supercontinent Pangaea may have released a huge amount of carbon dioxide, resulting in a runaway greenhouse effect. Like I said, we are bookending the age of the dinosaurs and a last mass, ex mass extinction event, the Cretaceous Paleogene or KT event, 66 million years ago, took them out. The cause of this one, we know. A space rock, an asteroid, became the dinosaur killer when it landed underneath the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico near the town of Chicxulú. This event resulted in the ejection of smoke and dust into the atmosphere, causing global temperatures to drop and may have caused tsunamis, earthquakes, fires, as well as acid rain. About 17% of all families, 50% of all genera and 75% of all species became extinct including the giant reptiles. In the seas, 
all the large marine reptiles called plesiosaurs and mosasaurs and mollusk animals called ammonites disappeared along with of course the dinosaurs. All non-avian dinosaurs were wiped out leaving us with birds as the only extant dinosaurs today. Most other life forms like mammals, turtles, crocodiles and frogs survived as did most other sea life such as shark, starfish and others. Because dinosaurs and large marine reptiles were no longer around, these other guys took over. They flourished and diversified and evolved into myriad creatures including us, the Homo sapiens. Which brings us full circle because as I said in the beginning, we are in all probability going through a sixth mass extinction and this one is caused by us, the descendants of the surviving species from the last ones. Called the Holocene or Anthropocene mass extinction, it is a result of our activities starting from the disappearance of megafauna at the end of the last glaciation period that occurred from 115,000 to 11,500 years ago. This extinction event is ongoing and affects almost all the biodiversity on Earth, including plants, animals, insects, and ocean life. Those dinosaur movies are pretty cool with large animals eating everything on sight, but humans are the real super predators. More than 90% of all organisms that have ever lived on Earth are extinct to the five mass extinction events. Let's see what survives after we are done with it.